Coming up here today on the Raiders Report, we're going to be looking at the biggest winners and losers from the Raiders preseason game against the Minnesota Vikings. I'm going to have these players ranked from five all the way down to one for the winners on both sides of the football. And I'm also just going to point out three losers on both sides. I mean, realistically, I was pleasantly surprised with the way that the starters played. The second half Raiders in that backup could have put a lot of those guys in the loser category. If you love the silver and black, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you don't subscribe to the Raiders Report and you watch this show, I'm just going to think that you're a Chiefs fan. When I see how many people watch this show and 28% of the people that watch aren't subscribed, blows my mind. If you appreciate what Jeremy Chugs and I do, subscribe. If you're just a hater watching... Go get a life and quit letting us live rent-free. Let's go here to our winners against the Vikings on offense. I'm going to put Jacoby Myers in this list. And it doesn't even feel right to put him at only number five. He had three catches, 45 yards. Didn't even really play all that much. But, like, you could see was clearly the best receiver that the Raiders had that was on the field in this preseason game. Aiden was looking for him. And... Often, he was getting open. He was making some clutch catches, showing some good separation. And I think it just goes to show that Jacoby is a silent assassin, one of the most underappreciated receivers in the NFL from a fantasy football standpoint, from a real-life football standpoint. I love having Jacoby Myers as our wide receiver, too, on this roster. Let's go to number four here, and I got to give it to Aiden O'Connell. And maybe I shouldn't put number four and Aiden next to each other again, but Aiden played himself a solid football game, so solid that AP let him go one drive, and he was 7-9 and nine for 76 yards and ended up pulling him after that. I wanted to see, you know, the Raiders score a touchdown there, and I think, like, that's kind of the biggest where... I wanted Aiden to get one more drive, and that, that was it. If the Raiders would have scored a touchdown on that first Aiden drive, I would have been, all right, take him out of the game. But because this quarterback competition is so close, I would have liked to see them keep him in a little bit longer, but Aiden played well. I am going to put Gardner as number three just because I did think Gardner played a slightly better game. But as I've said before, Gardner went up against the lesser of competition. He also had lesser competition around him, but it was the way that Gardner got it done. 6 to 12, 117 yards, was able to extend the field a little bit. And when plays broke down, Minshew made stuff happen. He picked up a clutch first down with his legs, which, you know, again, Aiden's not going to really be able to do that. That deep ball throw that he had to Trey Tucker was an absolute beauty. The touchdown pass to DJ Turner. I liked what I saw out of Minshew. Yeah, it was unconventional at times, but that's what you're going to get with the guard dog. You're going to get some unconventionalness. And I would just like to see the way he played with our starters. Even if you're going up against a starting caliber defense, Gardner Minshew with our starters is something that I want to see next week against the Cowboys. Let's go to number two here. It's DJ Turner. This is a guy that continues to just make waves this entire offseason. Antonio Pierce was asked, hey, who is the who are some players that have really impressed you this offseason? The first guy that he mentioned last week was Turner. Two catches on two targets, 23 yards, and a touchdown. He is a lock, in my opinion, to make this roster. And anybody that thought that he wasn't going to make it, he's going to make it. He's going to be this wide receiver for when Michael Gallup ended up retiring. You know, there was a lot of people that kind of hit that panic button. Now, we were somebody that knew that Gallup wasn't 100% healthy, but still, I am somebody that wants to get some of that extra wide receiver depth. But DJ Turner is getting better and better and better every single year. A guy that didn't make the 53 last season. He's going to make it this season, and he's going to make an impact this season for the silver and black. So how about this? Before I reveal who I think was the number one winner on the offensive side of the football in this game. You let me know. This is going to be the pinned comment here on today's show. You're about to get hit with a YouTube ad break. Scroll on down. Which Raiders player impressed you the most and was the biggest winner against the Vikings on offense? To me, the biggest winner was Trey Tucker, and the reason why I got Tucker here as the biggest winner is because, you know, he was somebody that was listed as a you know, training camp loser, dealt with a few drop problems in training camp and has kind of battled that situation. But the reason why I got Tucker here as a winner was not only did he look good with Aiden O'Connell, he also looked good with Gardner Minshew. And that's something that for Tucker, we know that he's got a connection with AOC. Those guys worked a lot this offseason, May, June, and July. And when Aiden's on the field, you can see that connection. But the fact that, you know, Gardner Minshew had the play breakdown. He just kind of lofted one up, and Tucker, almost like Willie Mays style, RIP to the great, kind of like went down, dove, caught it. I mean, that doesn't, you don't get much of a more difficult play than that, but that's what Trey Tucker's on this team to do. Extend the field. They used him a lot, a lot of pre-snap motion, which made me very happy. You're not going to see it on a stat sheet, but using Trey Tucker that way, that makes him a big-time winner, and I'm super happy that he showed up, showed that he got a set of nuts on him. Let's well, now go, unfortunately, to the losers, and I got to put Anthony Brown Jr. on this list, and he's a loser just because 
The offense was bad, and it's it's kind of unfair to only put him in here. Hell, you could probably put Carter Bradley as a loser too because the Raiders didn't even trust to throw the football in the fourth quarter at all. But Brown's also a loser because the offensive line played bad and just because Aiden and Gardner just definitely played better. I think we can all know, I said it last week, that there's no chance that Brown's going to be the starting quarterback despite Li-Fi saying that he has a shot. I think this finally put it to bed here. It's Gardner, it's Aiden, and then it's Anthony Brown. Let's go to number two here. It's Ramel Keaton. I just expected to see more out of Keaton, and he really didn't get a lot of run today with uh, you know the, the second string offense when he did. He had a penalty go up against him. Didn't see a single target today. Christian Wilkerson was used a little bit more, and just some other receivers that I was thought Ramble would have an opportunity to beat out. I just expected a little bit more from Keaton, and maybe that's an unfair expectation from a UDFA. But I think even, you know, Ramble would be like, I wish I would have made some sort of an impact today. And then this one is uh, just the second half offensive line. <laughs> there were so many players that I thought I could have put as losers in that second half that, you know, I mean, it was bad. Like, let's just keep it a buck here. I didn't really like what Andre Pete did in that first quarter, gave up a bad sack. You know, DJ Glaze looked good at right tackle, struggled a little bit at left tackle, but like, I mean, let's be honest here, Barrington, Ben Brown, Luisiano, Wagner, <laughs> um, the backup offensive line in the second half from the Raiders was one of the most disgraceful offensive line performances I've seen in quite some time. James Craig, I hope that I hope we get that situation started, figured out. Our, our top eight offensive linemen, I have confidence in after that, that was brutal, and I think we can all admit, that was a brutal, brutal second-half performance by that Raiders offensive line. Before we get to the defensive side of the football, shout-out to Game Time. They said, hey, Mitch, hey, Chugs, you guys want us to sponsor every show during this preseason week? We got you covered. That's a big win for us, and they're also here to hook up the nation with some of these awesome deals. So I love baseball. Obviously, I love football, and when you're in Las Vegas, there's a lot of different things that you can do. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets, whether it's a concert, comedy event, heck, Raiders preseason, you can go watch the Cowboys game next week. It is a late game, but guess what? You're still going to be able to have a good time while you do it. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code CHATSPORTS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code CHATSPORTS. To get $20 off, download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, the lowest price guaranteed. And you can use it for all different things. Like, I got tickets for Alex and her dad last year for the Raiders preseason game. Chugs got a Dell tickets last year. We got home run derby tickets. We did it to get Drake tickets. At this point, if y'all ever see me or Chugs at an event outside of work, it's with game time, and I love it because of the last-minute ticket deals where if you're in Vegas, you're going to stay busy. And if you're, like, looking for something to do in an hour, two hours, you go on game time, and I'm telling you what, you're going to find some awesome deals. Those links are available to you all down in the comments and in the description of today's show. Let's go to the biggest winners now on defense. I'm going to put number five up here, Amari Bernie. I just liked how much speed he had. I liked how much aggression he was showing on defense. was kind of flying all over the football field. Had a nice little tackle for loss. Did have four tackles, and I liked Bernie because I know that he's going to be a good gunner, and I know he's going to be a good special teams player, but it's him being able to materialize more as just an extra linebacker, showed sideline to sideline, needs to just you know get it up here a little bit more, needs some extra reps, but he's an athletic specimen, and I hope that we use it in the correct way. Let's go to number four here. It's Adam Butler, and Butler to me is a winner because he started. And I thought he played well. You know, he didn't really get all that much opportunity. But for a defensive line that we thought, you know, could potentially be Tyree Wilson as that fifth rotational guy in the defensive line. And I say Jenkins I knew was above him. Christian Wilkins I knew was above him. Max Crosby, Malcolm Coons, who was going to be that fifth guy. I thought it was going to be Tyree Wilson. It's Adam Butler. And they have a lot of confidence in Butler. And because Wilson didn't play great, Butler went out there. He got some opportunities. And he was a winner in my book. This guy could have been the biggest winner overall, realistically, Jaden Grant. And this has been somebody that we have talked about now for a few weeks, few months of he is a sleeper candidate to make the roster. In fact, when I did a video on some surprise candidates, Jaden Grant made that list. He was playing in the second, you know, second string safety rule where he was playing before Trey Taylor. He played before Chris Smith. He was out there on the field, made a few, you know, like impactful plays from time to time, got some opportunities. But that's a big win. And this is a player that, you know, even a guy like Max Crosby has talked about. Jaden Grant is a sleeper candidate to make this roster in this free, first preseason game. Absolutely prove that. Number two, Jack Jones had a beautiful interception on J.J. McCarthy. Kind of the bait of them into it. And she just shows that 
acceleration to be able to put his foot in the grass, get up north and south. Another guy who's not on this list but definitely deserves some recognition, Tyreek McAllister, number 32, the punt returner. He also showed a lot of speed today. I thought about putting Daniel Carlson in this list because, again, he made three field goals along a 56, which good for Daniel. For those of you that don't know, the reason why he's with the Raiders, he was cut by the Minnesota Vikings because he went 0 for 3 as a rookie. And I think, you know, it probably feels good to be able to sink some field goals into that stadium. But McAllister was good. Jack Jones, though, definitely with that interception shows that, hey, man, this guy's an absolute ball hawk. So which Raider player impressed you the most? On the defensive side of the football. I gave you my answers earlier on that one. There was one player, though, that you, you might know the answer if we made it this far in the show. He's just, he's just showing to me that he is ready to step up. He's going to be a hell of a player for this defense for a long time. And his name is Trevon Merrick. I love seeing him rock number seven. There was a point in the game where I kind of forget some of these guys switching up numbers and stuff. You know, you look out in the field and you see number 25 and it's like the third quarter. I'm like, why is Merrick playing corner? I'm like, oh yeah, he's wearing number seven. Six tackles. He's just, he's getting it. You know, like he's just in the right place at the right time very often. He's making some open field tackles. He just can do everything. He can cover. He can tackle. He can use them in so many different areas. And this is just one of the perfect defenders, hybrid defenders in today's day and age in the NFL where I'm going to say this right now. The way people talk about Minka Fitzpatrick is the way that they're going to start talking about Trevon Merrick. And I want them to go extend that guy ASAP Rocky. Before I get into the losers on the defensive side of the football, if you don't already know, I want you to pre-order order your shirts right now chatsports.com slash AP law I love the low rider look to this and you showed up we showed out new chapter new beginning shout out to the North Carolina Raider fans they just launched these new t-shirts and I want you to go pre-order them right now if anybody has ever seen me wear like my Tecmo Bowl Raider shirt if I have uh, my commitment to excellence white hoodie it is a beautiful fabric awesome shirt to wear in Las Vegas not going to shrink on you great great quality go get your AP shirt right now pre-order chatsports.com slash AP law that links in the comments and in the description of today's show <sighs> let's go to the losers now I'm going to put Tyree Wilson up here just because my expectations were a little bit higher from what I saw the burst wasn't there the speed wasn't there. Maybe he's just got to play defensive tackle again. I, it's it's an overreaction. I don't want to jump the gun, but like the expectation, you see, you can tell he's an athletic sp specimen of a freak. But sooner or later, you got to be able to see it on the field. It's got to be able to translate. And I'm a patient person with Tyree, but bro, bro you got you got to get it going here. You got to get it going. Let's go to number two here. It's Chris Smith, and this is a dude that you know I thought could potentially make the 53. I've been kind of seesawing back and forth on him. For Jaden Grant to play over Smith, very eye-popping to me because I really thought that this was going to be a team. I knew they had good safety depth. I didn't realize how high they were, though, on Jaden. And because of that, Chris might be on the outside looking in because they're not going to cut Trey Taylor. And then the biggest loser here, this, this one pains my heart a little bit, MJ Devonshire. And it's really just because of, like, two plays. And the big play is where he got burnt on the touchdown. I think like this is where the NFL really shocks you a little bit, and it kind of reminded me a little bit of some of the things that Ja'Cory and Bennett went through last season where Devonshire needs to get his technique down a little bit more. He's a good athlete. He's probably lived on his technique or his athletic ability his entire life. But in the NFL, you make one wrong step, and you get burned a lot quicker where, you know, in college football, Pitt, he's probably able to recover from it a little bit easier. That burnt touchdown, that one hurt, and I know he's probably really kicking himself in the butt because he doesn't get all those opportunities and giving up a long touchdown like he did today. That that definitely sucked. But I, I'm not totally out on him. I just he's got to be a loser. That's just the way that it is. Here one more time are the winners against the Vikings on the offensive side of the football. If you want to take a screenshot of any of these, and if you want to tag me on Instagram, Twitter, I'm more than happy to also to back up my answers as well. So please don't be afraid to uh, tell me where I'm right, tell me where I'm wrong. That's what this show here is all about. Always remember that you can tag me on Twitter and on Instagram at MitchellRent365. And if anybody during a game day is watching the Raiders Report or if you're at the game, hey, tag me on social media. I'll share it. I would definitely appreciate it. The next time that you're going to see me and Chugs live here on the show is going to be Tuesday, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Pacific. Enjoy your Monday. You're still going to get some videos out. I'm just not going to be going live. Even though the Raiders lost, I still think that we were the winner in this game. The offense, the defense from our starters absolutely outplayed the Vikings. No need to hit the panic button on AP. He's still the right man for the job. Can't wait to see what this team does this week and then against the Cowboys this weekend.